Assembling a high quality model steam plant, part 10. Making the exhaust piping and some pipe adapters. These are the two engine exhaust pipes and the cross piece adapter that I made in the last episode, or should I say modified. They've been in the acid bath and when they're cleaned up they look like this. I didn't get a finish like this by just using the Scotch Brite. These parts have been polished up using my polishing spindle followed by some brasso wadding. Refitting these two small nuts to the studs is just about as easy as it was taking them off, which was not easy at all, very fiddly. So much so it was quite a slow process, but here at 8 times speed it makes it look like a breeze. So that's one of the exhaust manifolds fitted ready for piping. I think before I tackle the other exhaust manifold, I'll just fit the Stuart displacement lubricator to the cross piece that I modified in the last episode. And this is not as simple as it first looks. I'm having to use shim washers to make sure that the cross piece is at 90 degrees to the lubricator, because otherwise it will look terrible. If the lubricator is not perfectly vertical, it really will look bad, and as it's at the top of the engine, it's the first thing that your eye will see. By fitting the shim washers, it showed me how much I needed to modify this cross piece. So very carefully, I ground a bit off using the one inch belt sander, then fitted a single washer, followed by the cross piece not forgetting the Loctite 542, and then I just tightened it up with a spanner, and now the cross piece is at a perfect 90 degrees to the lubricator body. And all that remains to be done now is just to tighten the nuts on the cross piece to hold it in place on the inlet manifold. Pretty much like this in fact, and I think this looks quite good. That's the steam inlet out of the way, and now it's time to continue by fitting the exhaust manifold on the other cylinder and fitting these very small steel nuts was just as fiddly on this side as it was on the other side. It was so fiddly that I thought I would speed the video up even further to get it over with quickly. And here is an aerial view of the steam inlet in position as well as the exhaust manifolds. The next thing I need to do is pipe these to the condenser. The first part of the job is to cut a piece of copper pipe the correct length to fit between the exhaust manifold and the right angle elbow on the condenser. There are problems when it comes to threading copper. Copper is very soft and you can't grip it very tightly in the chuck. This small centre drill stabilises the end of the piece of copper pipe during the threading process. I'm using some of my steam oil, machine oil, rapeseed oil formula to make sure that the thread is nice and smooth and isn't torn. And because the centre drill is in the middle of the copper pipe, it's really stabilising it and it cuts beautifully. You don't have to have anything down the middle of the copper pipe because this copper tubing is quite strong enough to take the thread, but it means you can put a little bit more pressure on it without any risk of the chuck jaws squashing the copper. That's one end done, turn it round in the chuck, insert the centre drill and do the other end. And I'm going to make two of these identical pieces of threaded copper tubing, one for each side. As I've mentioned before, steam engines are gas engines. Steam is an invisible gas. The stuff that you see coming out of the chimney is really water vapour. And this invisible gas needs to get on its way, do its job and come out without going round too many corners. And for that reason I've decided that the exhaust from each of the cylinders will go into each side of the condenser. If I bring the exhaust pipe, the one that's near the gas tank, all the way to the other end of the condenser, that's going to make that exhaust pipe quite long. So I thought the best solution really was to drill a hole in the other end of the condenser, thread it quarter by 40 threads per inch, put a 90 degree elbow in here and exhaust each cylinder into a separate end of the condenser. And in the first part of the condenser which originally had three inputs, I've just fitted a blanking plug in the one that's no longer being used. The steam union on the left will take the exhaust from the duplex pump. To avoid bending the exhaust pipes towards the condenser, I'm making a couple of extension pieces, so don't have to do that. So the exhaust pipes will come straight out of the exhaust, with only one sharp right angle bend at each side, which is a good thing, that's good gas flow really. In my small Boxford lathe, I currently have fitted a small piece of brass hexagon, and hopefully, unless the process goes horrendously wrong, this will be enough to make two exhaust inlet adapters for the condenser. First of all, I need to turn down this piece of brass hexagon to a quarter of an inch in diameter. And I'm setting my micrometer as usual with a quarter inch twist drill and then making a final fine adjustment. And I use this to tell me when the part gets the quarter of an inch in diameter. And once I machine this part down to a quarter of an inch in diameter, 
I take a note of the numbers on the lathe's cross slide hand wheel, so when I turn all the other quarter of an inch in diameter parts, I just look at the hand wheel, I don't have to use the micrometer. And once the diameter is reached, I thread part of it quarter by 40 threads per inch, then I use a centre drill to make a mark in the centre, followed by 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill to drill all the way down the middle, and then I simply have to part off the almost finished component and turn it round in the chuck to machine the other end. Once again, down to quarter of an inch in diameter, and this needs threading all the way down. I'm just having a look at the commercial union to note the thickness of the hexagon part. In this clip, I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch die in the tailstock die holder, and I run it all the way down and then all the way back again. And I end up with one of these. The only problem is I have to make another one. And the main problem is I've completely screwed this up. We all make mistakes, said the head job climbing off the hairbrush. I normally do show mistakes if I make them, because I am honest, it's not a competition. I do make mistakes. I made a mistake with measuring, so I broke my own rule. And instead of measuring the part twice, I only measured it once and made a mistake. I did not allow for the length of the thread that goes into the 90 degree elbow. I only measured up to where the 90 degree elbow started, which was pretty stupid really. So all I did was, I made another two the correct length. And the interesting thing is, it took a fraction of the time to make this second pair, because I wasn't videoing it. Setting the camera, the focus etc, and actually pressing record, which I do forget to do now and again, takes up quite a lot of time when I'm doing these jobs. I have to think about two things simultaneously, but thankfully I can do that. And here's the general arrangement. And I'm really happy with this, it looks very steam engine like. The next thing to do is to make the exhaust pipe that goes from the duplex pump to the condenser once again. The exhaust outlet on this Southworth duplex pump is 5 16 by 32 for 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe. And when I say 5 16 by 32, what I mean is 5 16 of an inch diameter by 32 threads per inch. In this clip I'm preparing to silver solder the unions on the end of this pipe and as you can see I'm very carefully fitting the union after I've spread the flux evenly on the end of the pipe. This is easy flow number two flux and now it's just about ready for the soldering process. As you can no longer get easy flow number two silver solder I'm using silver flow 55 and for once I'm not going to apply too much silver solder. When I'm making these videos, I find that I need to apply more silver solder so you can actually see the process. But a viewer made a sort of a snidey comment saying, well can you show it where you're not putting too much silver solder on then? So here it is. As you can see, I barely touch the silver solder on the pipe and it flashes around the joint immediately. But you won't be able to see very much of what's going on because I'm putting a very small amount of silver solder on the joint. Try it yourself, you'll see what happens. I've done lots of videos about silver soldering, so if you want to cross-reference them, you can have a look at the others. Once the silver solder has flashed around the joint, I keep the heat on for a short while afterwards, then I let it cool to black before quenching it in some water, and the thermal shock dislodges some of the scale. This piece of exhaust pipe that goes from the duplex pump to the condenser is 3 16 of an inch in diameter, and it fits into a 3 16 of an inch diameter union cone, I would say nipple, but some viewers get a bit excited and get really weird about that, so I call them union cones, but they're actually called pipe nipples. And in order to fit this size of pipe nipple, oh no, I've said it again, sorry. So as you can see, in order to fit this size of union cone into a quarter by 40 threaded elbow, I've made an adapter. Quarter by 40 to 5 16 by 32, and it looks okay. And with both of the union nuts tightened, the one on the pump and the one on the condenser, I can gently bend the pipe into the correct position. Once all these pipes and unions are tightened, this is the final finished position of the steam engine, the condenser and the duplex pump. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.